Tonight's event, as you should know by, by now you've come here, uh, it's called Take It From Me and it will see us turn to some of the sharpest minds in the country uh, to answer anonymously submitted requests for romantic advice. Now I've had a look at some of the questions that these panellists will be dealing with and I can tell you very assuredly that uh, we are in for a pretty amazing evening of advice. Um, now the hope is, the whole concept behind this event is that um, our panellists' respective expertise uh, will result in us getting quite a great range of perspectives and together we'll be able to collaborate and come up with some half-decent answers to questions of love. So let's meet our panellists this evening. Now first up, I'd like to welcome philosopher, translator, social critic, poet and academic Justin Clemens. Next, I'll get you to put your hands together for adult store and bookshop owner and Sunday Age Relationship Advice columnist, Maureen Matthews. And finally, one of Australia's most beloved rock and rollers, he's sung about the highs and lows of love and he may have even been the soundtrack to some of your own romantic experiences. Please put your hands together, <laughs> Tim Rogers. What, what, what do we start with? There's, there's one question in particular and you will recognise it as soon as we say it out loud that you'll understand that we've all gone, we have to do that but let's warm up to it. So we're going to start with um, a question about workplace romance I reckon. This is from Love Fool from Melbourne. I'm in lust with my boss. It sucks balls not in a fun way. I blush whenever I think of him, which is pretty much all the time. Sometimes I catch him looking at me and then he turns away. There's chemistry. There's a spark. But he is my boss and he is married. <laughs> I know, right? That was exactly the sound I made as I read that off the Excel spreadsheet. Mm. Um, to an amazing woman. Damn it. Should I declare my hand and see what happens? Is that risking my job slash pride? I'm never going to help a man cheat on his partner, so would that just be madness? On the upside, I might know for sure. These are all question marks. I'm doing the punctuation. Um, or should I instead fuck someone who was born in the 90s to take my mind off my ridiculous teenage-like <laughs> dilemma? I think I might have already answered my own question. <laughs> I'm going to start with Maureen. What's your opinion? Oh, don't go there because uh, you've got to meet them every day. I mean... What if you actually went through with it all and he was a really dud root and you've still got to go into every day? <laughs> Good morning, Mr Boss. No, don't go there. It'll, it'll, it'll fade. It will fade. Um, not a good idea. I love that, like, your first thing is just, like, what if he's a dud root? It won't be worth... <laughs> I'm thinking, like, he's married. Let's have some morals. And you're, and you're like, well, he might be bad in bed and it's going to be awkward at work. Well, whatever you do, it's going to be awkward at work. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> If you like the job, don't go there. Excellent. Julian. Justin. Ju oh I just called you Julian. God, dude, Jesus Christ. Uh, Justin. Oh, a fucking good start. Let, let right, me do look, a question. Well, well, I, have a... I just called someone by the wrong name. <laughs> all right. In front of a large crowd. Justin. That's all right. That's all right. Like my, my, my daughter, my wife, my mother, they can't call me by the right name either. But like, you know, <laughs> Jessica. Um, I, I, I think go for it. I, I think go for both of those things. If it's a dud root, too fucking bad. Like if it's a, if, if it's a, it's going to be. Yeah, it's your boss at work. Just you know, the the only things that are really exciting are prohibition. This is a, a genuine double prohibition. Like totally bust through both of those and see what happens. Like you know, don't give way on your desire. It's a simple, yeah, simple proposition. There we go. Um, Tom, I'm just, I'm just trying to make you feel not so bad. Um, Tim. Uh, that's all right, Julian. Um, <laughs> just, Jesus, Tom. With the, um, with the mention of um, finding an, an identicate uh, born in the 90s, is it legal to sleep with someone who was born in the 90s? It doesn't feel like it, Tim. I'll tell you what, it doesn't feel like it. But depending on which period of the 90s, there are... So, wait, what, wait, wait, wait 16, 20, 20, 20 yeah, they're legal. Legal-ish. No, they're very legal. Yeah. Is anyone here born in the 90s? Oh, you fresh-faced motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to have you. Thanks for coming along. Um, Tim, what's your opinion? Well, I like the idea of finding a, a replica, someone who looks identical but, but a bit younger. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> it's genuinely weird and what is sex but genuinely weird? 
Fair enough. Let's go to sex. This is from Sazi. I might have to say their names. I'm sure they're not real names. I wouldn't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, four, one, what? No. Um, Call me anytime. <laughs> Julian. <laughs> My partner hasn't had sex with me for four of our seven years together. <laughs> Take it, they may be here. <laughs> this could go either way, person who asked that question. Without explanation, it just stopped and he won't talk about it with me. I've managed to get him to see a counsellor, but after a year there are still no moves beyond hugging. He's my best mate and we have a great life together, but I'm starting to consider things like polyamory if conversation permits. Has he driven me crazy? Should I just take the heartache and leave? Tim? Take a lover. <laughs> but is that something you need to discuss with them first? Optional. <laughs> well, with those two words, I think I've got, I've got your feedback. <laughs> Justin? Uh, yeah. Polyamory, the, like it's difficult enough to hang out with one person, but trying to deal, deal with two people, it's just a fucking nightmare. Like, the, like ringing them, organising it, making sure you don't double up. I just feel like, like I'm a fucking middle-aged middle manager filling out forms <laughs> online. Don't fucking do it. And leave. Is your, is your advice leave or no, stay? No, no, no. I do, I do whatever you like, but just make sure you don't fill out any more forms than you already have to. Maureen. Yeah, look, it's a difficult one when the person isn't able to open up about what it is. Um, and I don't think it's an uncommon thing, actually, in all seriousness. I don't think it's an uncommon thing in long-term relationships for one person to kind of lose their mojo. Um, I guess perhaps you need to sit down and go, look, I just don't think I can go on like this forever. So mm. where, where do we stand on this now? What, you know, what are we going to do? Um, uh, I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've stopped waiting. Now I'm giving you a bit of an ultimatum. What do we do? We're going to do, have to deal with this. Do um, you think, like, fear of an awkward conversation just delays the inevitable, really? Like, you have oh. to bring it up at some point. Well, then the fact that he's been to counselling and blah, 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 but he won't talk, where do you go with that, you know? like Get a new counsellor. Give him a poor Google review. <laughs> two, two out of five, convenient yeah. location, but yeah. still well, not rooting. Well, I think you say... <laughs> I think you say, if you still want to be living with me, you either fucking talk about it or mm. something is going to change and it might be me that unilaterally goes and changes it and then it's up to him to decide what he wants to do, I suppose. In Marianne Faithfull's wonderful autobiography, this has a point. <laughs> she um, lamented that during her relationship with Mick Jagger that the one thing they never did was get really drunk together and that they sure took a lot of drugs and you know, a bit of acid and smoked a lot of... Pot and snort a lot of coke, but she said that one. If we, if we just got drunk together, we would have sorted a lot of shit out. So the addendum to my two-word uh, response before is, <laughs> get get drunk and really talk about it. it. For some people, that's the only way that they're going to do it. They're going to bring those defences down. I've based a career on it. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes talking's better than sex. Anyway, it's another way of having having sex. Not so often. like, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing it right, Tim? I, I need to ask. Like uh, talking, yeah, it's talking. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. never, never been my forte. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <so. laughs> Let's go to blown ego. My girlfriend often laughs during sex. Should I be worried? I am not a clown or a comedian. <laughs> Maureen, uh, I, I once heard somebody say it's all right to laugh during sex. Just don't point. <laughs> <laughs> what with Maureen? What with? <laughs> <laughs> but I do seriously think that you should be able to have a laugh during sex. It can be incredibly funny, but I, I guess it depends why she's laughing, you know. If she's laughing because the bed head just collapsed or because their bodies are making those sweaty farty noises or something. <laughs> but if she's just suddenly rolling around in hysterics, I guess it's, a, you know, maybe you need to say... It, could you explain the joke to me, please? <laughs> have, you, have you heard in your career, Maureen, of, like, people maybe having... You know how, like, you, you, I've read about women that, like, cry at orgasm or stuff like that. Oh, people have giggle-gasms too. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want to know. Yeah, like. they do, and they just can't stop laughing. But it's, you're not laughing at someone. You're just feeling quite good. But it would be nice to be clarified what the laughter's about, I think. That, <laughs> it would be reassuring to know that it wasn't every time I look at your dick, I start to laugh, you know. <laughs> Justin, have uh, you been laughed at in the bedroom? 
That's all that happens to me. I don't see what, <laughs> don't see what the fuss is about, really. No, not honestly, like from a man's perspective. And I'm assuming, like, it's really hard because people haven't written, not that it should matter, I guess, but people haven't written their gender on the questions and often they've picked a pseudonym and it's really hard to pick and you realise that your advice maybe would have been slightly different depending on the gender. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that, that this is a man, I don't know, there could be two ladies making sweet, sweet, funny absolutely, love. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, how, how would you feel as a man if, if someone laughed in bed? It depends on the person. Depends on the person. Probably probably not so good, like, yeah. you know, but too bad. Like, I, I do think Maureen's, Maureen's advice is quite good. Like, you know, like, what are you laughing at? But then, then again, it might bring up a whole series of, like, a, 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 what do you call it? Um, a home truths. Home truths that you don't want to hear. So sometimes it's best not to ask. Like, you know, how, if she laughs every time. But wouldn't you rather know? I mean, uh, because then well, you can at least now make we're back the to the value of talking, to keep yeah. doing yeah, it. To keep you know? doing. All right, let's uh, let's never have sex again. You, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. an interesting one, Maureen, about whether you want to ask the question to be told and to know in the cold hard truth yeah. that your partner finds you either your, your genitals ridiculous or yeah, your yeah. your yeah. procedure childish. Um, <laughs> And well, so why do you insist on wearing a Mickey Mouse mask in bed? Oh, you know? come on. <laughs> uh, what, whatever works. People always mock, Maureen. <laughs> um, I've got to uh, uh, say, um, as a performer um, in this situation, any response is a good response. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whether, it's, uh, whether it's laughter or, or, or cries of anguish. Mm. Or at least just, she's uh, feeling something. At Jen. least she's yes, feeling something. Right. Just, uh, just remember the safety words, everybody. Yes, that's right. <laughs> What are your safety words, Tim? Can I ask? Like, I always have a problem. Apple? No. No. Nah. 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 Never nah. got to that point, mate. Never Although got to that point. Although I did have point. to ask my partner to wash her hands after. <laughs> 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 okay, you guys. This is... This is the question that we've had in the back pocket. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Hygiene. Yes, well, <laughs> very good timing. Yeah. Good timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's do this. This is from Panda... Cute name. I like this guy. We get on intellectually. We love similar hobbies. We love the same food. And we've travelled to a lot of the same places. We have a similar sense of humour and we always have interesting conversation. I consider myself to be pretty open-minded. He is bisexual and likes humongous dildos up his ass. He likes feeling split open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I find this an aphrodisiac <laughs> hearing about it and once we were going to have sex and I came out of the bathroom to, play, to find him playing with a big dildo up his ass. what to do <laughs> the question everyone had been thinking Tim we got here I said we we're going to do the dildo question right and Tim's like I've been thinking about it for six blocks walking in <laughs> Tim what, what did you conclude in that, that six block walk uh, six mile walk oh, I, I walked from some, yeah I walked from home um, well, I feel like I, I, you can't help but musing on your, your own situation and I feel like I really missed out on something <laughs> <laughs> by not having um, a pleasurable response to being um, uh, to anything anal. Mm. And, um, but I'm looking forward to the day because it'll be, you know, some, oh, something new. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> but uh, to this point, no, it's just kind of... No. So I'd, um, I, I do have a friend who he and his partner have an anything goes night. Yeah, one of my best friends is the same, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Peter. Um, and anything, anything goes night uh, to... Which sounded a little bit kind of uh, too middle-aged for my liking. And, mm. you know, when I attain middle age, I'll have another think about it. But... <laughs> Gee, I, I don't know because if it's something that she, or he or she genuinely doesn't enjoy. Do you think that makes it different? Because we were talking about this when we read it, that if you thought that the guy is bisexual and he likes huge dildos up his arse, this is a highbrow wheeler centre event, by the way. <laughs> Keep on filming, camera at the back. <laughs> if he is a bisexual man and he likes huge dildos up his ass, but maybe the partner writing in is also a man and, and we does that make a difference in, in what you would say? Like you, you would go, oh, well, anal play between you two is like fairly par for the course, just the dildo part's weird. Does that... I've said dildo more times, times. than I <laughs> thought I would. This is why I brought along those cards with the <laughs> 17 questions. 
Because I, I think the thing is, clearly she, she, he or she doesn't have a problem with the fact that the partner is bisexual. But the conversation has to be about what do we enjoy? Um, you know, so, OK, you might like doing that. I might like hanging from the chandeliers, you know, with a rose bitten between my teeth. But what mutually turns both of us on when we are together? And I think that's the thing is, and, and, and who is this for? You know, who, if, if I find that really off-putting and not at all erotic, then it doesn't have a place in our lovemaking, which doesn't mean I'm ju judging you for wanting to do that. It's just that I don't want to play that game. So this is why the conversation before you have sex card is really useful because she could have found out on you know maybe question seven no i don't want to watch you with a massive dildo up your ass you know it would have, would have cleared how, how, the air early how, you know how, 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 how big is big that's what i wanted to know it's like big 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 how, how far do you go i think people well, I need can't to answer that need to be prepared for these things i think <laughs> I didn't ask would would you like it if i no i wouldn't if you okay well i won't then Hmm. If she's not, he or she is not into dildo play. Do you are you one of those people like Dan Savage, the advice columnist, who's kind of like you know you got to be giving and, and stuff like that. And if if they don't want to do that, then you can you have a right to go elsewhere for that. Oh, well, if, if the person's bisexual, then presumably they're going elsewhere for something, aren't they? Because they can't be getting the, everything they want from the one gender. Is that person, what you think so. of bisexuals, Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> well, the chances are that, that that might be something that another partner would find very erotic. But you just have to clear the clear these things up with the person you're going to play. Clear with. the air. Yeah, clear the <laughs> air before, and and just sort of. Don't spring things on people. You know, it, it would be just as yeah. bad. It would be just as bad if somebody suddenly grabbed you, put handcuffs on you, blindfolded you, and put a ball gag in your mouth, and we'd never had the conversation. And I'm not into that. You know, mm. so it's all about a bit of communication. It'd be more like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Justin. Yeah, that's that's also an okay answer, buddy. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, here's one from Shinola. I don't know if their names are real or not. Okay, Shinola. I'm in my 40s. Older men are the only ones who seem to like me now. I'm talking retirement age. Oh, <laughs> not those retirees. Oh, Brexit. Um, <laughs> yet when I give one a go, he soon starts judging me and telling me that I'm living my life incorrectly. I mean... Super judgy shit, like how I should spend my money, how I could decorate my house, who my friends are, who of my friends are my real ones. Basically, how I should live my life in the exact same way he does. I'm beginning to think the answer is to date much younger men because they actually seem to like me just the way I am. What do you reckon? Adore is my official answer. <laughs> I don't know about you, Maureen. Oh, look, older guys can be great, but look, we've all heard of mansplaining, haven't we? You know, it's. Uh, this Perhaps there's a man here that could tell us a little bit about it. No? I'm very glad you asked. It's a, it's a real, it, it's a really unfortunate thing that some guys take themselves really seriously, and as they get older, they're kind of convinced that. Oh, I think women probably do it this too. They convinced that they know how things should be done. Uh, no, you, you you've got to learn to um, get to know the person and, and give and take. And you know, maybe this is why these poor old bastards are on these dating sites and aren't having any luck, is because that they just cannot let go of the whole control freak thing when, once they get somebody in the, you know cornered they they want to change them uh, do, do you think that's generational i think it is a bit generational a bit of a dad thing do you think yeah. maybe I don't when know. does it tick over into being just cool rad relaxed guys <laughs> i have no idea because you know i mean <laughs> i've turned 60 now and i know a lot of guys who aren't like that at all but um you know there and i know a lot of guys who are about 35 who are like that you know yeah. so i don't think it's an age thing really but i think some of the older guys who are retired they do sort of feel as though they're very wise mm -hmm. and you know like <laughs> get over yourselves yeah. 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 yeah yeah justin i agree with you like yeah, come on <laughs> like any any yeah any legal age will do like you know <laughs> great tim i think uh, try middle aged guys they're um they're <laughs> Uh, They're great. Ha happy with themselves, um, <laughs> confident, uh, no longer give quite a fuck, uh, still in the last gasps of their physical uh, abilities. <laughs> uh, 
But no, we're, we're watching, I, as much as I love my father, the only time we, we argue is when I feel that he's turning into one of those um, mansplaining. I've never heard yeah. that, that term before, Maureen, but um, <laughs> that he's absolutely sure. And because and I can p pick him up on it and he'll go, yeah, sorry, mate, I, I just, you know, get a little bit that way. But I, I really would love to, uh, when I hit... Um, you know, my late 40s or 50s or <laughs> 60s and be absolutely as bemused as I have been before yes. and, and to not offer advice. So, no, but I reckon not to go for the younger blokes because they stink and they're awful. And <laughs> they're they're, they're, they're shithouse in the sack. Go for middle-aged guys. I <laughs> like I like the idea of cougaring and not, not in a kind of gross Courtney Cox kind of sitcom way, but just like I really like seeing women in their sure. 40s when they get – really self-assured as to who they who they are and what they want and what they want in bed and they've lost a lot of that this is not for everyone but they lose a lot of that self-consciousness and I and I love when I see that those couples where it's like young guys some young guys just love seeing that in a woman it's something very powerful when a woman hits her 40s and just hits her straps and I love it so I'm I'm, I'm the younger guy in my relationship not fucking love it yeah great see this is good you should be advising it mummy <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. Not Our relationship has taken a turn. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is from Lucy. Lucy says, I'm in love with a straight girl. I know because I stupidly told her after a bunch of tequila and she gracefully said that she just wants to remain friends. Feelings don't disappear overnight though. Help. Tim, what's your thoughts? Oh, boy. Um... Uh, I, I want to tell a story about my my mum and her wife, but uh, I, I'm, it's a little too. Close. I don't want to incriminate her without <laughs> warning, uh, warning her about it. But um, this is a safe space. <laughs> and it's Someone it's cover up the red light of the camera with their thumb, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. My assumption here is that a homosexual woman who has yes. fallen in love with a st yep. stroke. I, look, I think getting if it's a man, he's got no issue, and he shouldn't have wasted our time <laughs> by writing in. I really think advice from a 47-year-old C-list celebrity, 46, I beg your pardon, C-list celebrity, <laughs> uh, heterosexual is, is, is inappropriate. It's well. good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Good. I appreciate that. Um, Justin. Um, go for it. Sorry. Go for it. I don't, I don't have any other, like, you think, well, what else are you going to do? You're, you're into this. This is what you want. Like, try it and see. Like, eventually, you know, you can wear people down. But she's like, not... <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, my, my, entire, my entire life has been I like a process of like grinding people down. I think our friend with like the dildos is going to be ground down. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> All right, it was me. I wrote, I wrote that question. Um, Maureen. Look, coming back to the consent card, you know, she's obviously said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> don't turn into the creepy stalker. Yeah. Don't turn into the Facebook... You know, creepy stalker. Don't but, but, but surely you can say to someone like, you know, I'm not going. I'm not giving way on this. I, I love you. I'm totally into you. Like, there, there, there doesn't need to be a Facebook. I think, but there, there also has to be, to be the respect for somebody who said, I'm, you know, I'm very flattered you asked me. I am not gay and I'm not interested. I'd love us to stay friends. Please don't do anything else along those lines because you're grossing me but, out. Sure, uh, but, you know, but, like, but isn't, isn't that the point that? that, that no that, means that, no, yeah. Justin. No means no. <laughs> <laughs> But I, 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 was I, I was told by Amita, like, I could do this and I would get a drink. Like, I mean, that's not no means no. It's like, yeah. I'm going to um, jump in here because I'm in love with a straight girl sums up the first 30 years of my life. And <laughs> I feel like I have some advice to give on this particular give question. Give bloody oath. Yeah, that's someone that, you know, that's dated boys and girls. But I had... A, I think that I was so uncomfortable with who I was that my tendency to direct all my feelings to someone who could not return them was really a way of me protecting myself from actually getting rejected by someone who could be with me, mm. you know? And I think that that's a habit that sometimes can formulate in the same-sex attracted community where you don't really want to take that risk. And the advice that my best friend gave me about five years ago was, Jess, find someone super, super gay. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Enough. Yes. Enough. Does she love me? Does she not? Get a gay bow and just go for it. Yeah. 
And it was terrific advice and I'm very happy now with my lady partner. So I would very much think that that you might think that you're another straight girl and I don't mean to be patronising and pretend that, you know, you very well may be, but sometimes the reasons why we're directing our affections that way are, are more to do with how we feel about ourselves, not feeling genuinely comfortable. Have a think about it before you make mm. any mistakes and, and keep pushing, Lucy. Was it... Um, was it a Self-realisation, Jess, or was it... Oh, I, well, that was like 30-something years of self-realisation of going, oh, why, what are all the fucked up things about me? Where do they come from? <laughs> Is it that I hate myself dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and you know like all, all jokes aside like this is why stuff like safe schools like if I had people coming in when I was in school and going yeah. don't just because you're not straight doesn't make you wrong and you're not broken it doesn't mean that you're not going to find someone but you don't have that so you just spend the whole time shoving that part of you down and just going nope I can make it I can do it I can do it yeah. and and then it just you just set yourself up for heartache so you know I that's a question that jumped out at me as one I was like, I'll, I'll handle that. The other no, thing no. too is, <laughs> the other thing too is, it's a bit like the uh, one we had earlier um, with. Um, it's nothing like the dildo question. No, no, nothing <laughs> like the dildo question. No, no, um, but it, it's that. Um, oh no, don't worry, I've had a senior moment. Oh no, moment. no, 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 no I have. I've had a complete senior moment. So no, carry no, no, on. no, no. I know what you were going to say. It'll I think, come Maureen, back to me. you were thinking about the workplace one, and again, yes, it, what I was your going to say is that when you're infatuated or in lust. You think that you're going to die and it's never going to go. I'd say give it six weeks and it kind of dies down. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, on the other hand, there's something good about hating yourself. I hate myself quite a lot. I've hated myself for a long time. I see no reason why I should give it up. And I also see that, that sometimes like, like, a, like a, a, a love affair that is impossible is also something kind of beautiful as well. And so like, while, while I take absolutely everything that you say seriously, I also think that you know, there's also, there, there's also some, some benefit in, like, in loving something that does not return your love. Like, yeah, you got a wedding ring on there, John. Oh, happy home life, eh? Uh, yeah, my hey? grand... Reco recommending a little bit of heartache for the others, but you got a little wifey yeah. wifey at home. <laughs> this is... Hey? My, my, my grandmother gave this to me, like, so, uh, as well, she that's said... that's just illegal. Well, we well, never know that. As she said... <laughs> that's that's what, a question you should have written that, in, my friend, that, because... That's what she said to me too, Jesse. She said, like, why do you want to marry me? I was like, well, that's the only, that's the only finger it fits on. Sometimes that's the only finger that fits, like... <laughs> Well, let's go. To <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, like to call. No, no, you're right. I like to call this question honestly, like um, answering your own question with your question. Because here it goes. This is from X Sex. Why do people always end up sleeping with their exes? I recently had the opportunity to sleep with mine, but decided not to, even though it would have been so easy and familiar, and wouldn't have compromised our friendship. <laughs> Should I have just done it, Maureen? Well, I, I know of somebody who went through a lot of heartache and finally separated from the partner um, uh, with, with one child in the family and they had that last fuck and then there was another child and he would never got away. So, yeah, I'd be a bit careful of that one, really. You know, like <laughs> Are you saying there's no last fuck? Like... <laughs> I can understand how it can be comfortable because you sort of know each other and everything, but... I don't know, I think maybe if you... It, it depends whether you've actually both actually got over the whole thing mm. or if one's still carrying a torch. Because if the one's still carrying the torch and thinking one more fuck and he'll fall back in love with me or she'll oh. fall back in love with me and it'll all be on again, then you're just extending the agony, really, aren't Absolutely. you? Absolutely, and that's a classic move, by the way, that of course we're just friends and we can do this. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Justin. No, that's right. Uh, you, you can go. You can go on having a last fuck forever. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Draw that line in the sand, Tim. I'm no great moralist, but I, I suggest going home, putting on a George Bresson record, and masturbating Ooh. furiously. <laughs> with, with a giant dildo, Tim, or not? <laughs> Is it Tuesday? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> Anything goes. Monday, Monday, Game of Thrones <laughs> night. Tuesday, giant dildo night. We've got it. We've got a schedule. <laughs> Um, this question is from Pinging for Miss Wright. <laughs> <laughs> I almost never find members of the opposite sex attractive unless I've swallowed two or three pills. <laughs> Does this mean I am gay and or should I just keep taking lots of drugs? <laughs> Tim. Uh, 
for the past year, I've attempted to wean myself off uh, not a vicious cocaine habit, but uh, a burgeoning one, mm. um, because I was losing interest in um, sex when uh, when high, and I found that thoroughly reprehensible. Yeah. Because really, the two should uh, should really go together. Um, the <laughs> Can you actually kind of concentrate on on anything acutely, beautifully sexual when you're on ecstasy? I, 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 this I like is not, smoking a, when I'm on This ecstasy. is an oblique way. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Only take drugs so you can drink more. No, absolutely. I, here's my ecstasy story. I'll try and make this quick. I, last time I did it was with Tex Perkins about ten years ago and we sort of dropped You did it, it with Tex Perkins? <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> Ecstasy makes us all do things, Tim. Keep that, going. That's another story. <laughs> oh, Paris. But um, so, and as it was coming on, and it was really strong, and I went to a party, and Scott Owen, the bass player from The Living End, who's a dear friend of mine, decided to bundle over to me and start telling me he wanted to do this musical on ice, uh, on, you know, ice skating. <laughs> but the story of ACDC on ice. <laughs> And I'm coming on, I was kind of like, oh, Jesus, this is a really strong pill. And I just, I've never spoken to him since. <laughs> it, was the, it was the most awful thing to do. So uh, hearing about a musical, ACDC on ice. So yeah. how anyone could concentrate on sex while they're having that stupid fucking drug, just is, I'm, I, I, I'm unable to give advice. Yeah. <laughs> also, I just don't think you can count that as any kind of sexual attraction because I could have someone just softly pat my ear for hours. If I was on ecstasy and I'd go, that I have an ear thing. But I don't have an ear thing during the day. I'm, I'm a former hotel cleaner and a dressing room cleaner. That was my job for years. And um, cleaning rooms while on drugs, is that was absolutely the thing I'd go to. I didn't even, I didn't even touch my genitals <laughs> when on drugs ever. Justin. <laughs> Look, you know, desire so fucking mobile and weird. Like, do whatever you like. Like, if that if, that, if that's exciting, that's fine. Like, I, I don't see that that the people should be. I mean, the, the, I love all these questions, and one of the things I love about them is their utopian nature. Like, desire is bigger than the person that you are. Like, and and I don't, you know, d despite what Tim says, which I t also take seriously, is like, no, you know, your desire can go beyond anyone who you think that you are. Fine, mm. go for it. Yeah, I feel like there's real layers of not feeling very comfortable un and to do something unless they're Absolutely. high. Maureen, yeah, well, what I, are you thinking? Oh, I, I, you know, I I agree slightly with um, you know Justin. Do, do you can do whatever you like, but I, it would be interesting, I think, for the person to try to work out if anything, if they found anything sexually arousing when they were straight, so that they could get a bit of a handle on. You know what is their thing? How, and, do you, and it, how do you recommend someone does that? Like, like getting an allergy test or something? You know, like well, how do you, how do you figure that have, out? Have some fantasies. What sort of you know? Um, look, I had a girl that worked for me for years, and she went out with so many guys, and she said, "I don't know, something just doesn't feel right." And then suddenly one day, ping, she realised she was gay, and she's you know like, it, it could be that he's got a sexual confusion issue, or it could just be that he likes hamsters. I don't know, but you know like. <laughs> Find out what you do, f you know, write some erotic fiction for yourself. Just find out what does turn you on. Gets a bit of insight into what, you know, like... Mm. It seems a bit sad if you've got to take a... a, a you know, get pissed or, or get stoned or get something to get turned on with any, you know... Mm. What happens if you're on a desert island and you haven't got any drugs and there's some no, people there who want to fuck you, no. you know? Like I, have that no <laughs> I, have, I have that nightmare every night. <laughs> Uh, I've always wanted to, do you get turned on when you're singing? Like, because it, it seems like quite a sexual thing to do. And like, you know, hearing your own voice in, a, in a, the, the form of a, of a, of have, a, of have, a song. Have you, have you heard me sing? I have, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, no, I'm sorry I, I, to say, yeah, I, I masturbate every night to it, Tim. But like, do you no, touch but it's your quite genitals, serious, quite, Tim? Quite, <laughs> quite, quite seriously, it's, a, it's, a, it's an erotic Well, I, I do get, I yeah. get turned on, but I definitely, um, not in a way that could make me um, sexually uh, useful. Mm. Right. Um, I find that uh, we, Gig Dick mm, gig It's called cool. Is it, oh, is like, it it. like a half yeah. bungle? No, is no, I, no abso not, absolutely yeah. opposite Just Everything just <laughs> no, it <would laughs> but, it, but it's kind of good Like it, it, it feels energising Oh, it's, it's wonderful and, wonder, and you do actually There's some um, wonderfully um, uh, Sexual thing about it But mm. just uh, Sounds uh, very sting-like 
No, oh, no, no, please don't. No, no, no. Ooh, don't but, go there. But no, I'd be, um, I'd be sexually useless in the middle of a gig. But there is a beautiful mm. feeling. It's sort of almost. Uh, I'm going to regret saying this as soon as it comes out of my mouth, but beyond sexual. Yeah. I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> so better than sex is that? Is it? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have, um, we have a, I don't know if it's meant to be a two-part question, but the person came back and then they wrote their question under the name A Blonde and then they wrote straight underneath for their second question, The Blonde again. <laughs> so I don't know. Where, the two questions don't look linked. But Blondes on blondes. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. First question. Where do you suggest I might find a 30-plus obnoxiously clever stoner who has a job? <laughs> Tasmania. Second part of that question. <laughs> second part of that question, completely unrelated. How would you hit on someone in the library? <laughs> so you might want to incorporate that second part in your answer or not. I don't know. Maureen. Oh my god. A Thirty-year-old, thirty-something stoner who's got a job. Um, the public service, probably. <laughs> yeah. You, you may have a point there. <laughs> I think it's always IT because when I worked in IT like 15 years ago, there would be the guys there that had punched three cones and then like came in to do tech yeah, support and they seem to be doing very well for but themselves. But aren't they usually geek boys? Don't they go home and watch I didn't back, say back he was going to be great. Star Trek? Listen, obnoxiously clever. Well, they were clever. A stoner who had a job. Yeah. She wasn't saying attractive no, or good true. in bed that's or anything true. like that. You just got to... Could be a geek boy. Okay, Maureen, how would you a hit on someone in a library? Um... Go to the sexy section and just la- stand <laughs> there. <laughs> loiter. Loiter is your advice. Loiter near Lolita. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, but, but all parts of the library are a sexy section. Which, which part are you saying is sexy, Maureen? Is there an erotic fiction section? Oh, it could oh, be I'm anything. Sure there it could is, be the so. physiology section. Well, that's right. It could right, be the yeah. gynecological section. The philo- philosophy <laughs> section. Whatever, se- the philosophy whatever section, section you well, fancy. Right. It could be the proctology oh, section. Well, there if you, you go. Well, that's right. If you want to be split apart, Maureen. Yeah. Um, Tim. If you want to meet an uh, obnoxiously intelligent stoner over 30, go and see a rock show in Melbourne. <laughs> it's, um often encourage people who... When who has a job, Tim? I'm sorry, I think you forgot yeah, yeah, yeah. something at the end of that. Who has a job? Well, this is where you need the cards, right? Like. <laughs> uh, encourage women, if involved in a show, and it's a bigger show and it's expensive and it's at a, a, a big venue, so that people, you know... There are gigs happening all over town, and even if you don't like the music, it, the, the, there's a social activity, community kind of thing that you can get involved in, which is uh, it's not because um, I, I understand. I mean, every great relationship I've ever had uh, has been involved with drinking. I mean, that's what mm. I do, and mm-hmm. it's been about bars. But um, I understand it's it's not as pleasurable for, uh, from what I've heard, for a woman to go out to a bar alone, mm. Mm. which is a it seems to be the truth, but it's, it's shocking. It's horrible. Mm. It's ridiculous why a woman can't go out to a bar and not be, be hassled. Um, and going to see music or to go and see theatre or to go and see poetry readings or anything, just to, to get involved is a wonderful opportunity. But if she's after or he is after a stoner, um, go to a show. And also <laughs> really going to, going to the Athenaeum Library in Melbourne. Ooh. What? Really. Uh, uh, sorry, I was like... That's a very specific thing, and I'm going to ask about that. And then you in the crowd, oh, yeah, the Athenaeum <laughs> Library. Oh, Have hubba, you hubba. met? What, <laughs> what happens at the Athenaeum Library? It's the naked library, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is it? Okay. Well, the, I don't know. I just want to go. It's, it's a beautifully stocked library, and it's intimate, and there's a bathroom uh, oh. just 20 paces away. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we helped you with the first part, but the blonde again, how did you hit on someone in the library? Athenaeum is the note that I'm writing down. Uh, Justin, anything further? No, nothing further. It's just like libraries are sexy. You can you get excited anywhere in a library. Yeah. No. Beautiful. Uh, um, this is from Anonymous. <laughs> I had a partner who preferred to eat gluten-free food because gluten made his head fuzzy. Oh. I would sometimes feed him regular gluten-y pasta <laughs> and tell him it was gluten-free just to see what would happen. Does that make me evil? <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Tim. 
him. You're not evil. You're wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but it's an experiment. I mean, it, it, it's um, not congratulating maliciousness, but but um, it's a way of possibly uh, um, prodding the, the thought that maybe it's hmm. psychosomatic. Yeah. So you ever see that not? video? I think it was like Jimmy Kimmel or something. But they went to like a popular jogging site in California, and as the <laughs> joggers went by, they went. Do you eat gluten? And they would go, No, 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 I don't I don't do gluten. I'm on a gluten free diet. And they go, And what is gluten? Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's it makes you fat and um. yeah, that kind of thing. But there are people that have to legitimately not have gluten in their diet. What if he, maybe head fuzzy was his way of saying, I shit myself. <laughs> and he didn't want to say that because yeah. he's going out with her. So yeah. he's like, No, no, I never pass lots of but Bowel she, movements, I just get a fuzzy head. And he thought that was sexy and she's... But she's done it. She's fed it to him. He clearly hasn't trapped himself. So, you know, well, that that's saw. not... I think, it, I think that's, just, that, that's just funny. But I think evil would be like if you had a, a Muslim or Jewish vegan friend and you were putting pork blood in their dinner, that might be evil. Pork blood? It's not even just... <laughs> not even bacon with you. I just like, push it that little bit further. Kill the pig. <laughs> Taking it Lord of the Flies all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, I'm never going to dinner. <laughs> I'll absolutely go to dinner with you. Um, <clears throat> Over 50 Lament writes, I don't like bars, I don't like brainless, not really into bawdy, but there must be butte blokes who binge on... Okay, fuck this person, that's too much alliteration. <laughs> that is... Sorry. <laughs> they were just going to make me do a Dr <laughs> Seuss book and I am not falling for it. Theodore Geisel. Yeah. Um, Francis, Francis says, I'm in my late 30s. Oh, this is serious. Let's take this seriously. I'm in my late 30s and I'm about to marry someone I've known only for a couple of years. I think in your late 30s that counts for like 10 years, to be honest. Um, I love him, but I'm not sure if I'm settling. My clock is ticking and I feel the pressure. Maureen. Oh, it's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really big one. Run. Um, There's no time to run. She's in it. I love it. Oh, yeah, that's such a hard one. And, you know, and, and we, when we're in our breeding years, if we wish to breed, we can waste a lot of time on relationships and then you suddenly realise that you've, you know, you've just got out of yet another relationship and you're running out of time to form another one. I don't know what to say, you know. It's, uh, that's and that's a, a woman's one. curse, right? Because guys yeah. can go like, oh, I'm not going to settle down. They get to 60 and they find that's like right. some ripe 30-year-old and... Bob Picasso. Yeah, like a whole Pic brood of children. Like, I guess I got around to it. Pic Whereas women, it's like... <laughs> Picasso fathered a child after 90, you know. The men can never stop, the women have a bit of... I don't know, that's very difficult. Only she can know if she's settling really, can't she? I mean, She doesn't seem to say that, though. She doesn't say, like, I don't like him or no. we're not OK. She just seems to say, I've only known him a couple of years and I feel like... Well, that's, I think in your late 30s you kind of you know enough. what you want. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a couple of years is better than, like... Ten, you maybe need 10 in your 20s. Yeah. By the time you're in your late 30s, I think, like, after a year, you know what you want. It yeah. works. The, Go other, for the it. other point yeah. about this too is that um, you know we live in a society where we're obsessed with this romantic ideal of falling in love. There are many, many people who live in societies with arranged marriages and who end up being very, very happy. So, you know, like, just maybe just go for it and, and see how it goes, you know. People who thought they were madly in love get divorced. People from arranged marriages fall in love with their partners. So there's, nothing, there's no guarantees anyway. So go for it. Have the baby. And freeze your eggs. And just give yourself some time <laughs> to play. Tim? Oh, again, a man giving advice to a woman in that situation is, is kind of farcical. But um, the... Um I, I'm surprised to hear that that the, uh, when Maureen said that uh, arranged marriages um, and th there is uh, people do find joy in those situations and and I guess mm -hmm. the, maybe the percentages aren't great mm -hmm. but um, I'd always suggest to, to anyone if they're a friend but I wouldn't uh, suggesting to a, a woman in this situation to, to hold hold out for love but that's only because um, I prefer Brian Adams to Ryan Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. Sprog time. Sprog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Make some babies and Make think about it babies. later. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. That's, that's yeah. very good advice. Have we had any um, any questions go into the bucket? Oh, the bucket's right. I, <laughs> I can't not see the bucket. bucket. Oh, my God. Okay, guys, we have to do this very quick. There's a couple in here. We've got about mm, eight to ten minutes, roughly. Oh, God. But but I also feel like I've I've... 
it's not, not a great pen. We can do this. No ray is perfect, but you don't want <laughs> too little either. Oh, wait, yeah, wait, sorry, it starts on the other side. <laughs> How much expectation should we have going into a relationship? No. Nobody's perfect, but. I don't know if it's his body. I'm going to say Ray. <laughs> no, it's perfect, but you don't want to settle either. Too little. I misread that. And that was a totally different question. Yeah. Um, you don't want to settle either. Okay. Did that question make sense? Yes, I found it very hard it with does. that. It does. And, and, and I want to say, what have you got to offer? You know, these people who go out with this great list as long as their arms are what they want. I'm sorry. What are you bringing to the table here? That's really you good know, like yeah. Straight talk. <laughs> Justin? Uh, no, I think of Napoleon, you tried and you see, on son gage and puis on voit. Like, you know, just don't go to Moscow. That's the, the only advice. <laughs> there you go. Tim? Ex expect the world. Um, really, I think your expectations should be very high. But, geez, I love that. But Maureen said that, you know, just what have you got to, to bring? Mm. I, every morning I wake up and think, you know, with my relationship, what have I got to bring? Because, you know, she's everything to me. But I've got to, I've got to be at absolutely... Top level. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm going to uh, win her affections for another day, it's a day by day thing. <laughs> but that, I mean, I have that approach because I spend uh, quite a bit of time in Cass Road. Mm. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a day by day proposition. Let's keep churning through these. Um, I'm kinky. She's not. Um, or she's hot as. No, no, she's not. Um, <laughs> And I know a very kinky person who wants me. Do I go with a kinky affair? Maureen? Doesn't specify what, what nature of relationship really, it, does it's it? It's barely so legible, if yeah, I'm really yeah. honest with you. <laughs> well, yep, I suppose depends on the level of commitment that you've got within the relationship, but probably go with the person that, you know, who's into... Or sit down with a 17-point consent card and see <laughs> if you can negotiate something. <laughs> Are you getting the cut of this, Maureen? <laughs> you know what? There's a question that's been put in this bucket and I wonder if this person actually submitted it online too and we haven't hit it yet and I want to. Um, and it is about kissing. Ah, uh, yes. I love my fella. And this person's put in something about kissing so I'm wondering if it's the same person. I think we should hit it. I love my fella and pretty much everything in our relationship is excellent. However... I really like kissing. Like back in the day when I was at high school and would have make-out sessions with guys that last an hour, two hours, most of the night. Problem is, my fella does not share this level of enthusiasm for it and I have been finding myself daydreaming about making out with every handsome dude I spy. Hashtag guilt, hashtag moral panic, hashtag making out rules. FYI, the sex is still great, no complaints there. Tim? My, my first thought... Um, I've heard that um, there is a lot of pornography available on the internet. <laughs> oh. And I was wondering if, uh, with the proliferation of, of that and the access to it, whether it's made some people think that it's just genitals just bashing against each other <laughs> and, and that kissing really isn't um, a, a big part of, the making, of making love in, anymore. I, any thoughts? Am I, am I totally off the rung here? Or I, I think that that with young guys... So she talks about back in high school and they used to do a lot of making out and I did a lot of making out with boys too back in my day. <laughs> and it was very nice and boys were really into that because, you know, for a while that was as far as it would go. Yeah. And so kissing at that age sort of is like a pathway. So they're happy to persevere with that for an hour or two because it might get you a little bit closer to all the other parts that you want, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yes. And... Now, like with adult men, sometimes they kind of go, well, I don't need to earn that path to you because I already – we do it. We have sex all the time. It's great. So I don't need to I, – I don't want to sort of waste time because making out is a building up or – you know what I mean? Like it's kind of earning it. Whereas I think that we can, you know, give you a quick little kiss. We do a little bit. I'll do that, that, that. We go, no, 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 no. And everyone has a lovely time and it's great. But it just doesn't involve that kind of level of, the, of mouth caressing. The, the combination of um, sexual enhancement drugs for, for males and the proliferation of, of – I hope I'm using that word correctly – of pornography and it's uh, – even for not only for kids, but for for older gentlemen and women as well as me, think yeah, yeah, just uh, just want to see you know, come 
ropes of semen flying across and, <laughs> and you know, ejaculations uh, flying across the room and, and splattering against the wall and across your lover's face and, and that um, the, um, you know, the, the build-up and, and of, you know, of kissing and of making out is maybe for a lot of people just uh, it's passing them by mm. um, and not as an introduction to sex but also as a continuing thing. Because you would have been of the age group where to get, like, find some porn as a teenage boy, it mm. had to be that thing of, like, oh, I found it in the park and it was some <laughs> old Swedish magazine and, yeah. and it got passed around and stuff like that. It's not just like you just you, – you didn't have that, that easy access. What is that signal? Oh, yeah, yeah, disgusting, disgusting. The pages are stuck together. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. A- absolutely. Whereas I guess there's a whole other generation of men that have had that thing. Because I knew of a guy who, when he, and he was like 19 or 20 when he lost his virginity. Yeah. And apparently with his girlfriend, when he, when he had sex with her for the first time, as soon as he was about to come, he pulled out and he just came on her face. And she was like... Mm. That is not how we do it. The, like that is not how it happens. But he was just like, but that's sex. You do, right. you do it. You do it. They hadn't bang, gone bang. through those seventeen questions, had they? You, they had not. <laughs> Log on Ma- the seventeen questions again, Maureen. Maureen. I'm getting that tattooed on my back tomorrow. <laughs> but Maureen, I mean, what, what, what's well, your opinion on no, this? No, I think it is sad that people. Um, I think sometimes with people who have been exposed to a lot of porn, you know, in a porn movie, obviously you want to fit as many things in, so it's like boom, 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 anal, boom, 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 oral, boom, boom, boom. Um, and people I think, think you should do that the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know what sort of pornos you've been oh, watching, Jess. <laughs> but I think people have this unrealistic... <laughs> People have this unrealistic idea that it's like an Olympic event and that you've got to cover, you know, all, it's like a triathlon and, if, you know, you've got to do it all. Um, actually, I don't know if any of you saw that, uh, that series on the ABC, um, uh, Lukewarm Sex, and there was an episode on that about kissing and Shani Marie was great on it. And then I went back to Shani Marie and did a whole column on it. And she talks about a whole process with kissing and how it can just be the introduction to raising the, the heat and bringing the arousal level up. And, and I think also a lot of guys forget that women can be slower to arouse than men and sometimes that whole slower, erotic, sensual approach can make the end result a lot more exciting than just going straight from, you know, go to, oh, boom, we're off. So I think there's a lot of sensuality gets missed out on today, which is a shame. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, bring back the sensuality, yeah. Absolutely. Um, just, Justin? Oh, I was just really impressed by how all these questions, how beautiful all these questions were in a way. They weren't, they weren't stupid, they weren't offensive, they weren't... They, they, um, and I, I presume they'd been filtered, but they actually had a, a... All of them have a kind of, like, genuinely utopian, like, feeling towards, towards eroticism, mm. which can be of, of, of all sorts of kinds. And, and the, only other, the only other thing I'd say is, like, you know, like, eroticism can be of all sorts of kinds, you know? You can start with anal sex and end with kissing. It doesn't, you know? Yeah. The narrative is your narrative. <laughs> like, you know, maybe kissing is the... Is the is, is, I like is to warm the, up with a little bit of anal, and when she's nice <laughs> and ready... <laughs> Well, we make go. out. There you, there you go. Like. All right, look, I'm going to end on uh, a farewell question. It's pretty open-ended. It's from Cassandra. And she asks, what does a healthy romantic relationship look like? And is it often the reality? What's your opinion, Maureen? What does a healthy romantic relationship look like? It looks like whatever your healthy romantic relationship looks like, you know? Like... It's it's not a competition, you know. It's like if you've got a part, if you've got a relationship where one person is incredibly highly sexed and the other person isn't, you're going to have a problem. If you've got a couple of people, neither of whom are at all interested in sex and they just want to sit and knit together and sit Milo, that's a beautifully romantic relationship for them because they love it. Mm. So it's whatever is fulfills you and your partner. I, I think we live in this false world of magazine articles about what is the most ultimately, amazingly, this, that and the other, and everyone's running around going, how will I find that amazingly, ultimate, this, that and the other? And then, it, no, it's whatever does it for you. Whatever gets you through the night is all right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be Tim that would sing first. So there we go, Maureen. Um, Justin, what does a, a healthy romantic relationship look like? No, there are no healthy romantic relationships, Justin, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, if it's not working, keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. Well, I was lucky enough to be brought up with um, you know, my mum and, and uh, her homosexual relationship, my dad and his many heterosexual relationships and, and, 
uh, got to see all it go on in its its uh, various formats. So I agree with uh, with Maureen um, that it, whatever form it takes, you know, just um, uh, I'm misquoting you wildly, <laughs> but you know, if you find it, hold on to it, nurture it, be kind, be good, yeah. be good at it. Yeah. That's very good advice. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get you to put your hands together, please, for the panel here this evening? Tim Rogers, Justin Clemens, Maureen Matthews. Visit wheelercentre.com for the best in books, writing and ideas from Melbourne, Australia and the world. <laughs>